Today we'll be looking at how you can create cracks, crevices, um, glass shatters, whatever you want in any texture. It's very simple, it's very quick. I thought I should make a tutorial on it um, because you can use it, you could even use it for puddles, you can use it for anything. It's a really quick technique which I feel is a bit overused. I've got this scene here. Uh, this won't take long to run over, I've just set it up, I've set up the lighting and everything. Uh, the textures, the scene files, I will send, I will put in the description so you can uh, mess about with it. The marble texture I'm going to be using today, I'll leave there. I'll leave the crack texture I made and I'll leave the finished project scene at the end of this tutorial as well. So you can download what you want and mess around with it. The first thing we need to do is we need to go to Photoshop. Now it's very easy. Um, I know sometimes it's a bit daunting kind of taking things back and forth. Now what I did was I opened the actual uh, texture we're going to be using. So then we have the same resolution. So when we have the cracks, they're the same resolution. And what I did was I grabbed these cracks, which I will link below. Now I just start duplicating them, messing around with them, kind of, you know, you can see what I've done, right? Just merge it into one object, make it a bit more simple, and I put a white background on it. Always make sure the background's white and your subject, your cracks, whether it shatters, could be like ripples or something, you want some like alien type stuff, always make sure that's black. Um, if it's the other way around, it's going to give you a certain effect, and yeah, you can invert that again, but that's why we're leaving it white and black, because if we need a different effect, then you just click the invert button in Octane. It's that simple. Why are we not sticking the it just on the texture like that? Won't that do the same thing? No, it won't, because we're going to use this as the amount to bridge between two textures, and also, if you stick it on here, you're stuck with it on the marble texture, aren't you? The way we're doing it. We're creating a texture in itself, and we can apply that to anything. We can put it on wood. That would look really cool on wood. We can put it on anything we want. So, once you've got that, if you've just if you've downloaded the one I gave to you, this one here, then you can use that if you want to skip that. But first off, we are going to create a octane glossy material. Um, I'm going to throw that on the sphere straight away, just so we don't have to wait around, uh, and we'll call this marble. Uh, I like marble textures quite a lot. I just don't like them when they're too strong. Because uh, they're a bit of a hassle. Uh, we'll stick this in the diffuse. Marble speckle. I'll just call it speckle to separate from my other marble textures. And then we have that uh, all well sorted. Duplicate it. Normal. I've got the right one. Yep, normal. And that little Photoshop file you see there was the one I opened. I got this material from Free PBR. They do uh, tons of good stuff, so definitely check them out. And we're just gonna put, here's a little trick. Use the same transform node for all of your image textures. Don't use a different one for each one. Uh, let's see if we can mess with this a little bit here. I think I might use projection. Did I use that the first time? We're about to find out. Yep, of course I did, because look how nice that looks, right? So we're going to leave that there. We've got the marble. Next up, we're going to create uh, a specular material. The first time I did this glossy, but we're going to do it specular. Uh, and this is going to be the material inside of the cracks. Uh, so the little cracks that's going to be everywhere, this is what will be inside of them. So set this to 1.52. Switch to path chasing now. Uh, roughness, you put it up a little bit. Just leave it. You don't really need to do anything else. And I think now what we can do is bring in our mix and hook that up to material one. Hook that up to material two. Just bring it above, kind of. I like keeping things nice and neat. And we're going to let the magic happen. We're going to apply mix material. Image texture. Okay. So, you see, as uh, when I was messing around, I created the black and white one, and it just didn't look nice. That's what we need. Uh, there you go. Here's the cracks. 
Now what we need to do is use a gradient and we're gonna clamp this down. Just like that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna now I just want it all to be the same resolution, which is why I'm doing this. And you can see the cracks are looking pretty damn nice. Uh, they are, in fact, this can clamp them down a bit as well, the gamma, by the way, which is essentially what I'm trying to do with the gradient. Uh, you can see if, I'm guessing if I go to the other side, yeah, there you go. So if you want kind of really thin, looks like somebody's just ch took a chisel to it, or if you want, uh, you know, more kind of corroded look, you can go for whatever you want. I think I'm going to go uh, for somewhere just a bit in the middle. Oh yeah, huge shout out to David Ari, the tutorial he did a while back on textures and like surface imperfections in Octane. He like showed how you can use gradients to like clamp stuff down like this and I thought that was amazing. Um, so shout out to that also. Thanks for the plug on your website. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. It just allows you to kind of cut off things you don't want, which is really, really effective. Uh, if you are following this tutorial, I guess you're using the node editor like I am. That's why you're following it. If you don't use the node editor in your workflow, I would suggest it because without it, you can't have the same two transform, the same transform node powering everything. You can't have, for example, if I was, if this was a glossy and I wanted the same texture, I could just use the same image texture like that and then whenever you change settings it's just universal and it's like a much faster workflow in general and it just saves a lot of clicks as well because when you look at something you can be like oh that's there you don't have to click eight times to get to the gradient so I would suggest just trying your best to learn it uh, but the other thing we're going to do right now is we're going to drop in a displacement I will show you where magic is actually about to happen um, in fact, I'll do this now before we do the displacement. If you take this and you plug it into the bump, that's where you're going to get the actual crack effect. Um, I'm going to bring this up. I just like it being up there. And uh, in fact, no, no, no. Let's keep it like there. Up there. That works. Okay. Uh, so that works quite well. You do get. A pretty nice effect if you just plug it straight in there and you can see that's our glossy material uh, specular material uh, just to prove it uh, you see it's white let's make it lime green you can see that material is what's in there it's a little hard to see with the reflections and stuff right now uh, but we'll go back to specular or you know what would look pretty cool Let's create like gold cracks for the sake of the tutorial. I'll do it. I'll make gold cracks, right? Um, glossy. This will be cool. Film width. Uh, little trick for you to get nice gold. Film width. Really, really low value film width. Whew. The nicest gold you can get. If you ever see someone that has nice gold, film width. Film width. That's it. Uh, but yeah, that's the little bumper uh, effect. You can see what that's actually it there. If you, if you're just looking for the effect, um, the bump is oh god, uh, the bump will do that. You can see it looks trash right now. And it looks good, and you can see now why we haven't just back in Photoshop. How I mentioned, oh why aren't we just putting this on there? I don't need to explain it. You can see why now. Now you can mix the bump with the displacement, but first I'm going to show you it with uh, without the bump. So we're just going to put the displacement on there. Also, if you're using a mixed material, the displacement nodes kind of become obsolete. Uh, you have to use the displacement node in the mix. Uh, these two here um, will not work. We're going to bump this up to 2K for now. And uh, you can see it looks quite nice the, like that, but that's not the effect we want. Bring it down to like two, and we kind of get a little protrusion coming out. Um, so if you want more uh, obvious cracks, uh, you can go for that, and then you can mix it with the bump, and then you get the two effects 
kind of bridging over. Uh, I kind of like the one or the other type thing, but if I bring the displacement really low here, you can see that uh, it does, it, it works nice. And I'll slap this on the plane as well, and uh, you can see it's just such a nice effect, I love it. Um, also, one more thing I forgot to go over, I uh, just paused the tutorial where it is and I'll go over it quickly. Um, the scaling and the transform, I, you saw me mess with it a little bit, but I just wanted to cover it. If you want really, really big cracks, of course, you're just going to have to bump up the transform. And then what you can do is you can compensate with the displacement a little bit, and if you put that up a bit, you're still kind of getting that effect. But putting up the, uh, the cracks really high, say if we switch this to specular material, um, on the inside and then take out the bump turn down the film there you go put this to 1.5 and then you know you can just get some really nice big cracks you can spin it around so if you want bigger cracks it's that easy um, and you can see we've got the little dents coming out of it there so, so yeah just a little tip in case you were wondering how do I get bigger cracks? I'm pretty sure you probably knew, but I just wanted to go over it so you could see me doing it and how I work it. That actually looks really cool right now. Right, back to it. So I think before I end the tutorial, I want to, uh, is this still on path tracing? Yeah, it must be. Um, I just want to show you some of the things we can do with this because if this is your first time ever doing anything like this, um, then I, I'll just, I'll show you around it a bit a bit more now it's all set up so this is your texture um, everything you I'm gonna bring this up here just so you know that this is the amount um, uh, if you want puddles exact same thing you will get puddles um, of course you will need a puddle type texture um, or you could do crack puddles I don't know whatever you want um, so you can combine this in a number of ways and get what you want for example Let's say I wanted to break apart a Voronoi object ever so slightly and use a selection tag and have the inside surfaces um, set to an emission object so the inside glows. But what if I don't want to sacrifice that render time? Well, let's make this texture, which we've done. Um, we'll set the inside to a diffuse. We'll grab a black body emission. We'll plug it in the emission. And you've got the effect. Um, and if you clamp this down really, really tightly, uh, you will really, really get that effect. So you can see kind of where this can be used. Uh, uh, well, let's uh, add a RGB spectrum under the distribution. And we can make this like orange. Um, doesn't actually look that nice in orange, maybe. In fact, no. Let's just tweak the. Yeah. Looks looks nice. I like it. <laughs> I haven't actually tried this yet. That was just on the fly. I was like, oh, there's an idea. You see, that looks really nice. I like that. That looks like a sun, kind of. Um, so you can use this in a number of ways. Let's say... Uh, what do we want? Let's try and make this main material specular. Done. Looks good. Love it. You got cracks all around it. Um, I think it's probably wise to uh, mess with the index a little bit as well. You get some cool effects. And let's go back to glossy and get our gold back because I like the gold. Uh, so that's just one of the things you could do. You can really like just get creative with it, understand the system of this texture and apply that to a lot of things. And before you know it, you'll be making like massive lava puddles and like landscapes would be crazy. So this is just a little uh, tip for you. I know it went on a bit long, but showing you what you can do with the amount and any black and white texture you want. Uh, think like 
little raindrops, like condensation all over something. You could use like dust. Let me try that. Let me use the surface imperfection quickly to show you. So see, we'll use a white and black one. I'll use one that's got a little lines on it. Yep, right. Okay, it looks cool. You can't really see much. There you go. Just mess with the gradient. So you can do the exact same thing just like that. Uh, I know the purpose of this. So let's say you want scratches. There you go. Um, there's been a really, really nasty cat getting out of this marble floor that someone spent a lot of money on. So you can see it's just uh, it's pretty simple. I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to let you do the rest. I'm not going to show you anything else. Uh, I hope you learned something because this is really valuable. You can do some cool stuff. You can save yourself for ender time and uh, go crazy with it. So if you want to contact me, uh, follow me on Instagram or Twitter or join my Discord server. Uh, we post a lot of art and stuff over there and just chat about it trying to get some people over there so i'll leave that in the description and join it if you want please check out my other tutorials i've got tons of dope ones and i'm gonna make tons of dope ones so thank you thank you for watching and um i'll see you in the next tutorial unless i never make another tutorial but i will I promise maybe not yeah i will